Good evening, friends. Stephen Benoon here with Israeli News Live. And uh, today's broadcast has been a very difficult study for me. Uh, even recording this has been difficult. And we're going to be going into a lot of different areas. And initially, the very passage that brought me to this study was the 10 sleeping or the 10 virgins, uh, five foolish, five wise, the sleeping virgins, whatever you want to call them, similar to what the image here depicts here on your screen. And they go out to meet the bridegroom. Uh, we're looking at that from Matthew's prophecy, chapter 25, verse 6 specific, specifically. And But besides those 10 virgins, another there's several other things that have come to light in, in regards to this. As I have dealt, dealt, dove into this study, uh, of course, you go back to the creation story, uh, Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden. Uh, in, in fact, even finding an image for God taking Adam or Eve from uh, Adam's side, very difficult. There's not many images for that, many of those for the fall in the Garden of Eden. Uh, and, and then to fornication. Believe it or not, that has a big to do in this message here, mainly because um, we need to avert such actions in order to bring about a restoration so that, well, actually think about what it implies. Virgins, 10 of them are virgins, so they haven't committed fornication, but only five are wise and have oil in their lamps. So. All this is connected together. And what I was fascinated when I when I just look up for an image for fornication, I was blown away by all these different things that are popped up on here, right? The last trumpet, what is fornication? Uh, Bible prophecy, variety pack, uh, prophecy, a reason for hope. Uh, how can Bible prophecies help us today? Unlocking Bible prophecy, you know? And, and uh, all these different things here. And that's just for fornication Bible prophecy. I pull that up, right? Uh, well, I could understand why there's not going to be very many that make it. Let's just face it. Because of all the false teachings that go on in this world today. Um, when I say false teaching, it's it's I don't say that lightly. Really knowing the truth of what biblically is sound in this area is difficult. Uh, let's start though. I want to take you all the way back. We're going to start over here. I do have Ephesians up on the screen as well. We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. That's important in light of some of the things we're going to talk about today. Um, and, and here in John's Gospel, chapter 14, although I do have it at the beginning here, verse 3, we're going to go further on this. Uh, I go to prepare a place for you, and I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there you may be also. But, like I said, though, that there's a much deeper meaning in all of this, because let's face it. You know, when we're there with him, he says, In that day you shall know that I am in my Father, and you in me, and I in you. So it's not just a matter about, uh, you know, coming back, but it's being really one with one another. So, one with Christ. Now, I want you to think about that for a moment, because in essence... Adam and Eve were one at one time. Death set in only when Eve was taken from Adam. And some would argue, well, God saw that the man was lonely, didn't want him to be lonely, and so therefore took her from him. But nonetheless, death set in. And then when Jesus comes, he brings about redemption, and redemption literally is bringing us back to a one inclusive being once again. Now, I don't think it's quite the way we think because, granted, even when he says that we would be in him and, and you know, that he says, we'll know that he is in the Father, the Father is in him, and we are in him, and he's in us. 
Nonetheless, he starts off, though, by saying to us that um, I go to prepare a place for you. Actually, before that, even in my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. Another word, way to translate that is in my father's kingdom are many domains. So we're going to dive into this and really try to understand the meaning behind all these scriptures. Let's go ahead and start off, though. Like I said, this was what inspired me to begin with. And we're looking at Matthew 25 and says, Then shall the kingdom of heaven be likened to ten virgins, which took their lamps and went forth to meet the bridegroom. And five of them were wise, five were foolish. Notice how they're all virgins. They that were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them. But the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps. While the bridegroom tarried, they all slumbered and slept. And at midnight there was a cry made, Behold, the bridegroom cometh. Go you out to meet him. Now, if you were to notice, though, at midnight there was a cry made. The bridegroom comes. Go you out to meet him. I, I, and I kind of, I got into this too, by the way. I already knew about the scripture like all of us do. But it's mainly because everybody keeps, uh, you know, I, actually a friend of mine, Johnny Ken, had written me and he said, uh, Jesus is coming soon. Uh, and I thought to myself, but the bride goes out to meet him. All the virgins arose, they trimmed their lamps, they all got ready. And the foolish said unto the wise, give us of your oil, for our lamps are gone out. But the wise answered, saying, not so, lest there be not enough for us and you. But go you rather to them that sell and buy for yourselves. And while they went to buy, the bridegroom came, and they that were ready went in with him to the marriage. And the door was shut. That's important too. And the door was shut. Now, like I said, this is going to take a lot of different twists and turns. So we're going to back up over here. Matthew chapter 19. Pharisees also came out unto him, tempting him, Jesus that is, saying unto him, Is is it lawful for a man to put away his wife for every cause? Now you're going to probably think, what does that got to do with the bride, uh, the, the virgins going out to meet the bridegroom? Well, everything. And he answered and said unto them, Have you not read that he which made them at the beginning made them male and female? Now, that is very, very important, verse 4, when Jesus quotes this verse here, and he says, Have you not read that, it which, that he which made them at the beginning made them male and female? He's not talking about where Eve's taken from Adam's side, just that he says they made them male and female, Okay. Now, let's look at that. Genesis, and I believe that's chapter 2, if I'm not mistaken. Maybe it's chapter 1. Oh, you have chapter 2. Okay, here we go. And the man said that, no, 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 I'm sorry, 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 wrong. I'm in the wrong spot. Uh, chapter 1, I believe. Yeah, chapter 1. Here we go. Chapter 1. Not chapter 2, chapter 1. And God said, let us make man in our image, after our likeness, and let what them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air, and over the cattle and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. And God created man in his own image, in the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. 
And God blessed them, and God said unto them, Be fruitful, and multiply, and replenish the earth, and subdue it. Now, a lot of people like to argue, and they say, well, you know, Genesis uh, chapter 1, okay, that's God speaking about the creation, but in reality, we get the details in chapter 2. He takes the rib from the side of Adam and makes the woman. No, no, incorrect. And we know this is incorrect because when he breathed in the nostrils of the man, he breathed in the plural form of life, the chayim. And had he and man, though, by the way, became a living soul, chaya. So there had to be more than one person there for him to breathe in more than one form or the same life, but more than more than one of those lives into the into the man when he breathed into his nostrils. So it's the fact that the separation comes. Now, we're going we're gonna to dive into this, so we're still working on it. Let's go back to what Matthew says here. So Jesus said, Have you not read that he which made them at the beginning made them male and female? You're going to have to think deep with me on this, because this does get deep. And he said, For this cause... Shall a man leave father and mother and shall cleave to his wife and they twain shall be one flesh. Wherefore they are no more twain but one flesh. What therefore God hath joined together let not man put asunder. Boy, I tell you what, that is deep there like i said when eve was taken from adam the fall set in or death set in to the human race now could it be because god knew what well, well, we already know the scripture says the day you eat thereof that day you will die When they were truly one, there was no death. Think deep with, with me, guys. I'm telling you, this is a deep one. So Jesus, as they're tempting him, is it lawful for a man to put away his wife for every cause? And you're thinking of just a carnal marriage and divorce scenario. But Jesus doesn't take it so lightly. And so he takes them back to the very beginning and he said, have you not read that God in the beginning made them male and female? That's when he's letting you know he created them as one. Not two, one. And he said, for this cause, then he goes on, he quotes chapter two, shall a man leave father and mother and shall cleave to his wife and they twain shall be one flesh. That's restoration. That's prophecy. The only difference is, is now Jesus is fulfilling that prophecy. Because he's left his father and mother, and he has came down here to cleave, or literally that word in Hebrew is to glue. To... Why would you need to glue something back together? Because it got separated. Mm. And those two shall be one flesh. No more two again. Wherefore, they are no more two or twain, but one flesh. What therefore God hath joined together, let not man put asunder. Whoa. Now you want to talk about... Now you can go back and start looking at the scripture of John... And where we read, believe me that I am in the Father and the Father in me, verse 11, or else believe me for the very work's sake. For verily I say unto you, he that believes on me the works that I do shall he, that I do, shall he do also. And greater works than these shall, be, shall he do, because I go unto my Father. 
Whatsoever you shall ask in my name, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. We're getting to it. If you shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. If you love me, keep my commandments. I will pray the Father. And see, if you keep his commandments, he says, and I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever. Even the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it seeth him not and neither knoweth him. But you know him. For he dwells with you and shall be in you. Who's the one that was dwelling with them? Jesus was dwelling with them. And he shall be in you. He was what? He was the spirit of truth. I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. Yet a little while and the world sees me no more, but you see me because I live. You shall live also. At that day you shall know, here it is, that I am in my Father and you in me and I in you. He that hath my commandments keepeth them. He is... He it is that loveth me, and he that loveth me shall be loved of my Father, and I will love him, and will manifest myself to him. That's restoration. That is bringing the two back to one again. That's what Jesus is talking about right here when he says, <clears throat> This cause shall a man leave his father and mother, talking about himself, prophesying of himself in Genesis, and shall cleave to his wife, and they twain shall be one flesh. Wherefore, now this is what Jesus says about that, they are no more twain, but one flesh. Hmm. What therefore God has joined together, let no man put asunder. That's interesting, because you've got to understand here. See, when we get into the Genesis account, This is where the separation began. But he's telling you, though, if God joins it back together, that's the best way to put it. If God joins it back together, let not a man put it apart again. Now you'll understand why fornication matters, why being a virgin matters. Not just a virgin, but a virgin with the oil. And the man said, this is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman because she was taken out of man. Therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother. See, that used to never make any sense to me. All right, as a woman is taken out of the man, why is a man got to leave his father and his mother and shall cleave unto his wife and they shall be one flesh? Well, they definitely were not one flesh. They, one is taken out and they're no more one flesh. So clearly, verse 24 has to be a prophecy then. And the rib which the Lord God had taken from the man made he a woman and brought her unto the man. She's taken out of him. The man said, now this is bone of my bones, flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman because she was taken out of man. She's taken out. There is now separation. Therefore, and this is where Jesus quotes it, shall a man leave his father and his mother and shall cleave or be glued or be put back together again unto his wife and they shall be one flesh. And that's why he says, wherefore... They are no more twain. They're no longer two, but one. The mere fact that he says, wherefore they are no more twain, is a direct acknowledgement that Adam and Eve were separated in the Garden of Eden. Now, they're, they're looking at this on a carnal level. Is it lawful for a man to put away his wife for every cause? So the carnal and spiritual type one another. They wanted to physically divorce their wife for any reason. So he shows you there was a carnal separation in the Garden of Eden. 
a physical, in other words, a, a literal separation. But what did that cause? That caused some big problems. And that's why he says, did you not read from the beginning? He made them male and female. When you look at that, this, had, this is before the separation ever occurred. Because it does say, let them, plural, rule. And then he goes into the prophecy. And that's to restore it. And then he shows you that once it's restored, do not let man put it asunder. And we're constantly looking at a physical physicality of marriage and divorce, but your, your physical marriage does type your spiritual as well. Don't put away your wife. Or vice versa. We move on to uh, in Corinthians, and this is fascinating, it, and it goes hand in hand, because this is what happens. I wrote unto you in an epistle not to company with fornicators, yet not altogether with the fornicators of this world or with the covetous, or extortioners, or with idolaters. For then must you needs go out of the world. He's letting you know. that. See, this is the danger, by the way, of when you're separated from God. See, Jesus Christ is our Adam. And we want to be married to him as one. Otherwise, as two, there is that chance, that very real possibility, the fornication will come about. That's why Paul writes, yet not altogether with fornicators of this world. And he goes, for this must for then must you needs go out of the world. That's why you have Ephesians. We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities. That literally is archons. And against powers, against the rulers of darkness. It's a spiritual adultery. See, the, the, those evil spirits are always looking to see if you're alone. If you're by yourself. Because then you become more of a target. Going into Corinthians chapter 6. Let me see if there was something else. No. Okay. Know you not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Be not deceived. Neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor infamous or abusers of themselves with mankind. Nor thieves, covetous, drunkards, revilers, nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. As such were some of you, but you washed. But, see, but, but you are washed, but you are sanctified, but you are justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of our God. All things are lawful unto me, but all things are not expedient. All things are lawful for me, but I will not, but I will will not be brought under the power of any. Okay. Meats for the belly, belly for the meats, and but God shall destroy both it and them. Now the body is not for fornication, but for the Lord. And the Lord for the body. And God hath both raised up the Lord and will also raise up us by his own power. Know ye not that your bodies are the members of Christ? Shall I then take the members of Christ and make them members of an harlot? God forbid. This goes back to the fact that you are to be one with him. Like before the fall ever set in on the earth. What know you not that he which joined 
which is joined to an harlot is one body. For two say, says he shall be one. So two saith he shall be one flesh. But he that is joined unto the Lord is one spirit. Flee fornication. Every sin that a man doeth is without the body, but he that committeth fornication sinneth against his own body. That's interesting in itself. Every sin that a man doeth is without the body, but he that committeth the fornication sinneth against his own body. What know you not that your, your body is a temple of the Holy Ghost which is in you, which you have of God, and you are not your own. For you are bought with a price. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. Because you have come back to be one with him. By the way, I did have up here the book of Ruth here. The only reason I had the book of Ruth up here is because I did think find it fascinating in the story of Ruth, which is a type of the marriage of Christ and his bride, that Ruth comes in and she lays at his feet when? At midnight. Of course, uh, Boaz is going to do the kinsman, the work of the kinsman redeemer to redeem her. Her being a Gentile, redeem her uh, among the women and everything. But again, I just thought it was fascinating. That's why I included it in this part here. Because he, she came at his feet at midnight. And of course, we already know that the scripture speaks about, uh, you know, Jesus giving the, the, the parable of the virgin. She goes out at the midnight hour. So... The part, okay, I don't really need to use that one there here. But I just, again, going back to this one more time, though, that is so fascinating, and I hope you really get what this is here. This is all a prophecy. And the beautiful thing is when Jesus quotes it here under the marriage and divorce application, and he says to them, he quotes that scripture to them, or first quotes to them, have you not read that God in the beginning created them male and female? And he said, for this cause shall a man leave father and mother and shall cleave or be glued, being brought back to his wife. Now he's giving this also though as a, as a physical type because of their marriages and things like that, but he's also taking it deeper, showing that he was the redeemer. He is the Boaz of that day coming to redeem, uh, which Boaz, though, is actually representing the fact that he takes the Gentile bride. He redeems her. And, um, you know, and so we, we, we see this there. They're no longer twain, but one flesh. And wherefore, they are no more twain. But he goes much deeper in that. Then, then he says, what therefore God has joined together, let no man put asunder. So once you are truly come back and you are one with Jesus Christ, no one is to put that apart. No man, nobody, nowhere. This has nothing to do with your carnal marriage. This is your marriage with Jesus Christ. This is the restoration for what happened. Literally, Jesus came to restore back what was, what was destroyed in the Garden of Eden. And I know some people they find that hard. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. God took that, you know, God took out the woman, right? Okay, but death set in because of sin itself. So Jesus knew the only way to fix the problem is to bring them back one again. And then, of course, Paul warns that you don't go into fornication as a result. So... Very, very, very deep, uh, you know, short message, but a deep message. Now, I really pray that God will reveal to you just the depth of what this is because it just blows me away. Anyway, I'm Stephen Benoon. I trust it is a blessing for you. And uh, by the way, no, no, I'll save that for another time. Um, 
I forget where it's at anyway. It's in the book of Psalms somewhere, but it's something I was going to tell you about, but I don't remember where it's at. Anyway, God bless you. Thank you for listening. And uh, if you, if God lays upon your heart, which I'm sure he will, to support the work we do, please do so. You can visit our website, IsraeliNewsLive.org, and uh, you can donate either online right there uh, or by clicking the Donate button here or by mail, P.O. Box 156 Sunbright, Tennessee 37872.